What's up? I'm Jacob Blitzo, your Elixir mentor. We are continuing to build out the GIST live view. And if you remember in the last video, we got our GIST looking nice and pretty, and we added our delete, edit, and copy buttons. And in this video, we'll get our line numbers working by doing a small refactor to use the code we already wrote for our creating a GIST. So we'll make that more reusable. Let's go ahead and start our project. So let's go ahead and make sure our database is running in Docker. Mine isn't, so I'll start that. And now it's running. And then open up our terminal with command space terminal. And let's CD into our project. Mine is in documents, develop, Elixir mentor, and then Elixir gist. And we can start the project with doing mix space phx dot server. All right, and now let's go ahead and open up our local host 4000. Okay, so it opened up because I must have already had uh, created just from last time I used this, but here is where we left off. We, we, we got all of this looking nice and pretty. You know, we have our username and file name here, the description, timestamp, and we added these delete, edit, and copy buttons. And what we want to do is add line numbers in right here. And if we go to our homepage, you'll remember like as we type, line numbers show up. So we already have the code written, we just have to make it uh, more reusable, right? So let's go ahead and just open up our project now. I'll make it full screen. And if we go into our assets directory and then the JS and open app.js. We're gonna scroll down to our update line numbers hook and we have this update line numbers function right here inside this hook, but we want this to be more reusable so we can call it from our highlight hook as well. So to do that, let's go ahead and just cut it out of here. So command X and we can get rid of that comma then after our mounted block. We need it outside of our hooks so it can be a function and called. So I'm just going to go right above our hooks declaration here. And if we do function and then paste what we already have written and throw a semicolon at the end of our closing bracket, now we have a function that we can use uh, from other places. And one thing we have to do to refactor this, we no longer can do this element dot value. So we need to pass in the value that we are creating the line numbers for. So we're going to just pass in something called value. And now we can delete this dot L and just do value dot split at backslash N. That should be all we have to do to make this function work here. And now if we go down to our update line numbers hook, we have to just make a few adjustments here. So we no longer can do this dot because we're not calling it within this hook. So we're just calling update line numbers and we need to pass in our element value. So we can do this dot L dot value and now that will be sent into our update line numbers function. And then down here is the same thing get rid of this in front and we'll just call our function and then we can pass in our this dot element dot value. Now save that. And if we go back to, let's make sure it, it should have rebuilt. So now if we go back to Firefox, we wanna just make sure our line numbers still work and they do. So our refactor is working and now all we have to do is call our function in our highlight syntax hook as well. And where we would wanna do that is inside of our mounted block here, right after we do the highlight element, we wanna pass in the text content from this code block that is now ha that now has syntax highlighting. So directly underneath this, we can just call our update line numbers and we can pass in our code block dot uh, text content. And then if we save that, that should be all we have to do to get our line numbers working. So let's go ahead and make a new 
gist to see if this works. I'm going to just copy our update line function or our update line numbers function and we'll call this line dash dash numbers dot ex. Actually, it is JavaScript, so dot JS and line numbers function. And now when I hit create gist, look at that. We have our line numbers next to our gist. So we already had this set up. Now I do notice we can select this and it's highlighting up there. So we'll have to fix that. Enjoying the video, show some love with a like and hit subscribe to stay updated. To support me and keep the content free, click join for memberships or pick up a course at elixirmentor.com and get free access to my private community. Let's jump back in. So one thing I noticed as once we added our numbers here, one, um, there's a big space above our syntax block. And for whatever reason, highlight.js adds a line above and underneath our code. So one, one thing that we can do, and we can just remove our, basically we're gonna just remove the first line and last line of any gist we create. And then we can scoot these line numbers up and just have it look a little prettier than it is. And we can just create a function inside of our highlight block. So inside of our highlight JS hook, and so after get syntax type, put a comma there and let's add a new function called trim code block. And we're going to pass in the whole code, uh, the whole code block, not just the text and then opening and closing curly braces. And what we can do here is similar to how we did the line numbers where we split it at the backslash n. Let's go ahead and do that so we can get each individual line. So create a variable called lines. And that is going to be code block dot text content. And then we're going to split it at backslash n. So wherever a new line is there, we're going to split it so we have a nice um, list or array of our lines. And then if, as long as our code block is greater than two lines, so as long as our array here has more than, you know, the length of two, we know that it's not empty and we can actually remove things, right? So inside an if block, if lines.length is greater than two, then we can do opening and closing curly braces. And all we have to do to remove the first value of in a list, we can just do lines dot shift. And that removes the first line, the first value of this array. And then if we do lines dot pop, that will remove the last. All right, so that's pretty easy. And then all we have to do now is do our code block dot text dot content and set it back to our now our edited lines. So we are going to say make text content equal our lines because we just removed the first and last lines or values in the list. And then we are going to just join it back together. So it's one string and we're going to join it at um, backslash n. So now we have our one value again, which is nice and easy. And then all we're going to do here is return our code block, return code block. All right. And then to use this function. So right before we do the highlight element, we want to go ahead and just send in the trimmed version of our code block. So I'm going to just call a function or call a variable trimmed and set it equal to this dot. And then we can call our trim code block and send in the code block that we are getting from our pre code tag. Okay. And then here for highlight element, we're going to just pass in trimmed instead of the code block we're grabbing from our HTML and then our update line numbers instead of code block dot con uh, text content, we're going to send in trimmed dot text content and then save that. And if we go back to Firefox, you'll now see we our code moved up 
So we don't have that extra space and we don't have an extra space below it, but we do have to adjust our padding now on our line syntax because we made that too much in the previous video when we were getting everything lined up. So if we go back to our code and let's open up assets, our CSS directory and go to app.css and we want to find our syntax numbers class that we created and this padding on the Y, let's just drop it down to like, instead of 28 pixels, let's try 12 and then see what that looks like. And that looks pretty awesome. So we no longer have line numbers going off the screen. It's aligned and it is looking pretty dang good. And one last thing I want to do, if you notice, if I click on the text area that our line numbers is, this little blue highlighting happened. If we go back to our app.css, for our syntax numbers, let's just add uh, focus colon ring dash zero. And then hit save and let's go back and now it doesn't do that. So we successfully refactored our line numbers function to be reused in our project. We then removed the empty lines at the beginning and the end of our highlighted um, code snippet. So this project is starting to look really good and I'm excited to move into the next video. As always, if you need help or wanna check out the solutions, check out the GitHub link in the description. Join my Discord server Elixir Mentor if you have questions or want to hang out and chat. That link is in the description as well. If you wanna learn how to build scalable, production ready, full stack and REST API solutions, hit that subscribe button now. I'm Jacob Blitzo, your Elixir Mentor, and I'll see you in the next video.